So this next little topic that I'm going to have um, more than one video segment on is not really calculus. It's really uh, a branch of pre-calculus. And it's a topic that we covered earlier in the semester in this multivariable calculus class, but not under this name. Parametrization of curves. That is what we would say are a lot of syllables in the English language. Parametrization of curves. And the idea is to take something that is in more than one variable and write it in fewer variables. But let me just show you what we have some experience already. So what if we were to do look at a line segment from the origin zero zero to the point eight comma three. So we would be able to graph this if we wanted to, x axis and y axis. And here's the point eight three. And so I want to direct my segment um, between those two points. So the old style, which is not really that old, we've it's been very recently using it, is the parametric form of the equation of line. So x is um, the starting point coordinate, and then delta x is 8, and y is again the starting point coordinate, and then delta y is three. So I didn't do that slowly because we've done this many, many, many times already. The way we're going to write it now is going to be in vector form, but with all the same information. And we're going to go back to our vector valued functions from an earlier chapter. And the x part of this equation will go here, and the y part of the equation will go here as components of a vector. And this would be the vector form for that directed line segment. Now there's a piece of information missing. We'll need it later. What is t doing in this time interval? Well, if t is 0, that would put us at the starting point, 0, 0. And then if t is 1, you will find that this gives us the point 8, comma 3. We'll need this for something later. Well, then one of the things we learned was there might be more than a way to write something like this. And so we could, you know, what about... You know, we could we could vary this. We could we could change the speed or the rate of this line. What if we said that the x component of this line um, was only half the speed and the y component was half the speed? We called this a scalar multiplier. How long would it take this? to get from 0, 0 to the point 8, 3. In other words, if we start at time 0, 4 times 0 and 3 halves times 0 are both 0, but what time will we arrive at our end point? Well, that's right. It'll take 2 units of time, or 2 seconds to get there. 2 times 4 is 8, and 2 times 3 halves is 3. So there are infinitely many possibilities. Infinitely many possibilities. Now, let's continue with some other um, examples. So, so what if the line segment 
is from this new point, 8, 3, to the point, 1, comma, 5. So, again, I could sketch it. What if my point goes from here, the point, 8, 3, to here, the point, 1, 5, and it's going specifically that direction. Well, the way we wrote this in the old style, x and y begin at 8 and 3. And then we would note that the change of x is negative 7, 7 units to the left. But the change in y is a positive number, and 3 to 5 is 2. Minus 7t plus 2t. So that's the old way. Our vector way of writing it, 8 minus 7t, 3 plus 2t. Those are our two components in two dimensions here. Anyone want to guess what time is doing? Now I did this quickly. If t is zero, this will give you eight and three. So it's really important to note that this is where t equals zero. So my question is, what value of time is that? Well, you'll find, I believe, that the way we've set this up is we've set it up to go left seven and up two in one step, in one step. Now, a couple more interesting examples. Don't forget, you have a pause button. Use it if you have to. All right, so our curve is on the y equals x squared parabola from the origin to the point three comma nine. How would we go about writing this in its parametricized form? Well, this isn't one of those parametric versions where we took the time to memorize a formula. What we did was we look at um, the R of T as the input can be x and the output can be f of x. Those would be the x and y values separated. And in using time as our variable, t comma f of t could be our variable. So for this particular example, R of t would be x is t, and then y would be t squared. Now I wonder what the time boundaries would be for those two points we have to travel between. x-axis, y-axis, part of the parabola graph, 3 comma 9, 0 comma 0. So what's the starting time? That is correct. It should be t is 0. What's the ending time? Well, if time and x values are the same, the ending time would be 3 seconds or 3 units of time later if I write this model. Now, we could do it differently. We could sort of merge this function notation and what we learned about lines together. We could say that x begins at 0 and goes right 3 units begins at zero and goes right three units. 
And therefore, the y component is whatever the x component is squared with our function. And that would be 3t comma 9t squared. If you choose that model, what that will give you is that time only takes one unit of time to go from our starting point to the next point because we told it to go from there to there in one unit of time. It says or because both models work. One last one for this video segment. The curve is on the graph of y equals x squared from the point 2, 4 to the point negative 1, 1. Our next example here. All right, I can't talk and draw at the same time, apparently. X and Y. So what if the graph begins here at the point 2, 4, and it goes this way until we get to this point, negative 1, 1. So what if it travels in that direction? Remember vectors give us direction and magnitude? What if our vector function travels this way? Well, I would suggest that the best way to go about this is to use this concept of whatever x is, you plug that into the function, and that's how you find the function value. Here we go. r of t will be equal to the x component begins at 2. But then notice that delta x is 1, 2, 3 units to the left. Almost as if we were writing the parametric form of the line. But then the y component is whatever the x component is squared. We're going to leave it like this. I think it looks nicer this way. And we've set it up. So that x starts at 2 and goes left 3 units in one step of time. All right. Come back for some more. I've got a few more examples left to show you.